YouTube, we are live after 18 from the Country Club. We're going to break down everything we saw today. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you're subscribed. We'll jump into it right now. Welcome to the First Cup Podcast. I'm Rick Gaiman, and for the first time <laughs> ever, one, we're all together. Two, we're outside, which yes. creates some elements that we're going to have to work with. Greg Ducharme is here. Greg, you are not only here at the Country Club, but you are working feature holes, my friend. Yes, uh, it's been very fun. Um, broadcasting a little bit, getting my feet wet yeah. there. But my, the highlight of the day is meeting you guys in person. <laughs> I mean, we've been working together for over two years now. Has and it been two years? Well, 2020, 2019 right? 2019 President's Cup was like our first yeah. our first thing. It's almost been it's three almost years. Been three. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we did have a little lull in the middle there. But yeah. Now, I mean, almost two over two years, and we hadn't met. So That's, I'm very excited about this. What a weird world to, like, work together for almost three years and not – I mean, we've met. Yeah. We, we, we spend hours a week talking to one another. I, 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 like I legitimately time. probably talk to you guys some weeks more than I talk to my wife. For sure. Maybe. Hmm. That's not up for everybody. It's not for everybody. We uh, are. What a day. What a day. We are literally uh, range side at the Country Club here in Brookline, Massachusetts. Uh, let's talk golf course first. I think when you get a U.S. Open, that tends to be the star. Greg, we'll start with you. You got a focused section. What were we on? 11, 12, and 13 today. 11, 12, that's 13. That's integral stretch of holes, and obviously you walked the rest of the course. Um, it, it, it's fascinating because 11 is this, it played 122 yards today, had a frontish hole location. It's way downhill. It, the green is not, it, it's plenty big. It's, it's a big enough green, yet it gave guys fits because it, it was all based on where the hole location was. It was right on this little saddle and player after player would leave it low. And then if you, if you, it, the next guy who played it high, it breaks the other way. Uh, from long of the hole, so it was it was very difficult. And when the wind was swirling, they're dumping it in the bunker. A couple guys hitting it way long for just a 130 yard shot. So that was very cool. Um, and then 12 is highlighted by the slope of the green, which I think is a huge part of the rest of this golf course. Uh, it's it was the hardest hole on the golf course. It's only like 473 yards, and it all it has everything to do with the green. I mean, it's even it's a wide fairway, yeah. uh, easy to hit, and that green is just so severely sloped. And I I think there are probably more difficult hole locations you'll see there at 12 as well. So. Did it give Fitz Fitz? Did it give Matthew Fitzpatrick Fitz? Uh, you can, you, can you use that tomorrow on air? If he makes like a double there? If he makes a double there. Today, what a shot he hit. That chip was sweet. Right? You're talking about he chipped in from back there. Was that on 11? Uh, no, that was on 12. Okay. Yeah. The hardest hole on the course. He you were talking about 11 giving people Fitz. 11 was giving people Fitz. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And 12 was too. It was the hardest hole out there. Yeah, yeah. KP, you've had the luxury of being here longer than I have. I, I got here this morning. I walked. The first green I saw was 17, and I just laughed out loud yeah. of how small it is, how difficult this is. I mean, we, we described it as rugged all week long. Perfect description. I didn't know what that meant until I got here. Yeah, it's it's really it, it's a really cool course, and Greg just puts us to shame when we're talking about stuff like this, but... <laughs> The thing that really struck me is I, I felt like, and I want to get your take on this, Greg, I felt like the USGA set it up really well for a first day. It reminded me a little bit of uh, Wingfoot in 2020 where it felt like, okay, JT shot 65, not today, but in, in 2020 at Wingfoot, but we can turn it up from here and, and players are going to start going backward. And that's what it feels like right now because I walked, with, uh, I walked in the morning with Rory, Xander, and uh, Hideki, and the greens were slow. They weren't, I mean, slow. They're not slow, but compared to what they could be because of how slopey everything is. Right. So it feels like it feels like the USGA has the, the course in, like, the perfect position for a U.S. Open to be able to turn it up over the next three days and, and uh, just have kind of a, a really fun U.S. Open weekend. Well, you can hear, you can probably hear how windy it is here. And when you, when you have windy conditions, with um, which it's going to be like every day, maybe the direction will change, but it's going to be windy every day. When you add that to really slopey greens, they become unplayable. And I think the USGA is just they're they're done with being the problem in a U.S. Open. And we've seen it ever since Shinnecock in 2018. Yeah. I mean, Pebble was very benign in the setup. Um, Wingfoot was very 
it was tough but benign and so was Torrey Pines and I, I think we're seeing the same iteration of that here where it's a tough test and there's room for it to get more difficult no question um, but it's it's fair the, the speaking of the greens I saw uh, Rory and one of the other guys in their group uh, into 17 I think it was Hideki they hit these so 17 is kind of a short ish par four if you can cut the corner and they both had great drives. It was Rory and Hideki. And because of where the pin was on the on the back uh, shelf there, they hit these, like, kind of – they, like, drove these, like, spinny pitches, like these really low, like, spinners. And it was just such a cool thing to see because it's, it's not something that you necessarily see at a regular PGA Tour stop because of – you know, it feels like everything there is just hit it as high as you can and, like, you know, let it fall out of the sky. And it was a creative, cool shot that we don't see every week on the PGA Tour. And it, it just – it made me appreciate, I think, the green complexes and the way everything was set up at a, at a place like Brooklyn. The man at the top of the leaderboard, gentlemen. Your boy! A four under, 66, six birdies, <laughs> two bogeys on the card. Adam Hadwin out in front, one shot clear of the chase pack. Greg, you've been telling should, us this as we been We should coming. leave. Just let him, just let him have the stage. I've been Sharp telling show. you this since we first met. Yeah. <laughs> Adam Hadwin is uh, – look, this is, this is a difficult one for me. I said out it nearly every morning, the last three mornings. It, it, your emotion, your emotions are running board. too high or what? It's difficult. Yeah. From it's this too, too big to talk yeah. about. Every Thursday morning I've been sending out a here we go again because Adam Hadwin will be <laughs> two under through two or one under through one and in first T1. And it usually doesn't hold on, but now he's the overnight leader of the U.S. Open. Now, I, I feel like – Right now, the top of this leaderboard has a lot of guys who are kind of in his style of play. They're shorter hitters, maybe a little more accurate, good, good putters and good short game players. But right behind them, that group at one under par and even is the Bombers. And as you said, that golf course gets a little more difficult as the weekend goes along. And I'm a, a little bit worried that, uh, that a guy like Adam Hadwin is going to kind of, that, that leaderboard is going to flip. Can you still hear us, Jacob? We got blowers over here and they, we're battling the elements it's no longer dome podcasting right. we're it's out we're out in the elements uh adam hadwin feels a little like uh russell henley last year to me Great where compared. i don't i don't think i don't think he's gonna shoot 78 tomorrow i think he could hang around a little bit but i don't know that at the end of the weekend he's gonna be uh holding the trophy especially with the horses that are behind him so i'm sorry greg but it could, it, it might, he might get overtaken Look, down the is, stretch. This is a win for me. If, if it, I, I wish that there was some kind of crystal or some commemorative for you, object for, for me. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, not for him. Well, they are piling up behind Adam Hadwin. They're not going to let him have this one after just 18 holes because there's a pack at three under, which is one shot back. That pack headlined by Rory McElroy, second consecutive major championship in which he's been at the top, near the top of the leaderboard after the opening rounds. But we saw KP kind of a very different version of Rory McIlroy today. We did. Uh, I was surprised. Very surprised. And, you know, he played well. He played really well. I mean, he, he hit, I don't know how many greens in regulation. You might have it right there. But I was with him for most of the morning. It seemed like he hit, I don't know, 13, 14 greens in regulation, which is kind of the what is 13 13 there you go uh, it's kind of the name of the game here and at u.s opens in general I, I thought i thought it was a good round but he you know he he uh excavated the bunker on five with his club he threw a club on nine and i so i think two things i think one um he sh he's not beyond our criticism like it's not a great look but at the same time, it was cool to see him, like, really engaged in a major. Because I think some of our criticism of him at past majors has been that he's sleepwalking or that he's not engaged enough or that he's not emotional enough at some of these majors. And so that part was cool to see. But I think the other thing, and this is the part that I worry about a little bit more, U.S. Opens are so emotional. I mean, it's such an emotional four days because of how the golf course wears you down. And his, he's been carrying a lot around emotionally, just in terms of the live golf stuff versus the PGA Tour. He's been, they kind of rolled him out as the, I mean, he, he's become the de facto s spokesperson for all of golf. Right. And 
that's an emotional thing. And it's something that he said today, like, I didn't, I didn't ask for this. You guys just keep asking me questions. And I think that has worn him down a little bit. I think we saw the kind of a little bit of that on Thursday. And so I worry about how that holds up for the next three rounds. If you just watched the body language and you just saw the low lights, you would have thought it was a 77 in the opening round from Rory McIlroy, not a 67. So might not be pleased with the game, but at the end of the day, he's one shot back with 54 to go. He couldn't be in a better position. I mean, he's exactly where you want to be. And I, I think this one feels different because of all that emotion that yeah. Kyle talked about. Um, and sometimes the opposite of fear is is anger and the opposite of nerves can be intensity sometimes and when when the moment gets really intense and you get riled up the way rory has it it, it can calm your nerves and it can take the moment and it, it shrinks it from uh, i gotta win the u.s open to i gotta beat somebody else or i'm gonna prove greg norman wrong or i'm gonna it, it focuses that one moment um, or, or this huge event down to one thing, I'll show you. And I, I think that's really going to help Rory through the rest of the yeah, week. I think it, I think it um, Rory's so interesting because when you talk about the PGA Tour against Live Golf, which has become what this, this not just this week, but this entire year is about, his, um, his play on the course gives his words off the course gravity. And gravity rules the world, right? Like we are, we are confined by gravity. Like if you have gravity, then you have power. And I think that's that, you know, for like, there's a lot of guys that speak well about golf, but they don't all go, go out and shoot 67 in the first round of the U S open. So I think that like whether people want it to want it to be or not, like live golf is a storyline and the people speaking against it or for it is a storyline. And Rory winning this week would affect that landscape for the rest of the year. What he's trying to accomplish has never been done. Justin Ray lets us know that no player has won the U.S. Open the week immediately after winning on the PGA Tour. So trying to accomplish that feat. Uh, it's not going to be easy because the, the names continue to pile up. Dustin Johnson, one of those defectors to live golf, Greg. T7, two under par. I think there was a lot of questions about the state of Dustin Johnson's game, how we compare those 54 hole events in 48 player fields to what we see on the PGA Tour, but so far so good for a, a past US Open champion. He's a great US Open player for, num for because he drives it so well and he has control of his shot shape. I saw a couple times when he hit a beauty into 13 that was a high fade. He couldn't even see it. Um, but he scrambles well. He grinds hard. He, he takes putter. his time on putts. Putter. Extremely underrated putter. We've talked about that many times before. Um, and I think that helps him on difficult setups. So um, I, I, it, in a very strange way, you're shaping up for a big live versus PGA Tour <laughs> can battle. You, with can you Rory imagine and if DJ. we got Rory and DJ? That's right here in front of us. Oh. Oh. I'm not sure it's going to be the final group, but these guys can both hang on and compete here well i think i think i don't know about you guys i've been accused of like oh you just you hate all the live guys and you want them to shoot 80 and you are the phil mickelson of our group you take all the heat on the <laughs> on the on the live golf comments and we thank you for that I'm you're just the a, punching bag I, <laughs> we just get nothing you get it all so thank you first off so i i don't I don't think that. like I want DJ to be in the mix because it, it's it's more interesting to me. I think it makes it fascinating. You've got this. It, it, I said this on Twitter. It's not it's more nuanced than this, but it's a little bit of it feels like good versus evil right now. You've got a lot of villains on the live golf stuff. I don't know that DJ is necessarily one of them, but he's sort of the face of it. Right. Yeah. And you've got all these guys like Rory and JT that everybody love on the PGA Tour and I just, I think a DJ Rory uh, kind of duel would be, it would be awesome. It would be so much fun. It would, it would be emblematic of where golf is at right now. And I think it would be, uh, whether people like it or not, I think it would be great for this week. Two big names at one under par, John Rahm and Justin Thomas. John Rahm had himself a John Rahm day. He drove it very well. He, Morikawa as well. He gave himself plenty of, of, of opportunities. Justin Thomas going for his second consecutive major championship. Col throw Colin Morikawa in there. Colin Morikawa, if he wins this event, would have three legs of the career Grand Slam in 11 major starts. I mean, this is this is shaping up to be incredible. And they're right, they're right there. This yes. is the perfect position. And you can see the way this leaderboard is shaping out. It's like we've seen this movie before. Yeah. 
you know that the the heavy hitters are right there. We and saw it gonna, last year. We, la, yeah, I mean, you saw it in a way last major and last week. Uh, last week, these things have a way of evolving and uh, to use the cliche line the cream rises to the top yeah. and, but that's especially true at a major and they're hanging right there you have to trust john rom's uh, ability with the driver and jt's scrambling and iron play there, there are so many reasons to trust these players that they're going to contend and compete who, who do you think out of those three finishes the the highest on the leaderboard this week well i think at the beginning of the week i was partial to JT, but the more I looked at Rom's numbers, I mean, <laughs> the numbers were so good. Yeah, he's turned it around. He's he hasn't quite put it together, but he, the putter is not an issue anymore. Right. right? That's that's scary. The putter's not an issue. Around the green has not been an issue. And oh, by the way, he's the best driver of the golf ball on planet Earth. I think he was the best driver in the field today. He I was at least was... top two last night, Chad. Okay. I didn't see what the final number was. Yeah, yeah, I think it is tough. He he had a moment where he could have made a nine on 17. He had a yeah, provisional. That, yeah. So he, he hit a ball that he thought went out of bounds. He had another one, and I think that one did go out of bounds. So he, he's about to hit another one, and they found his first one. Right, so, so he's about to be five off the tee, yeah. thinking his first two are out. Yeah, <laughs> they found his first one. He ended up making, I think, a four. He could have made a three. I think he had a he had a look at birdie. I think I'm going JT. He put, he played in the tougher wave of those three guys uh, again. again, again, all year. JT's it, been in the tough wave. It wasn't quite as bad as Thursday at the PGA, but he he was he was he shot the same score in the tougher wave. Morikawa is weird because. It should be him. He's been extraordinary at major championships, but he keeps talking about this draw that he's hitting that he doesn't really, it doesn't sound like he trusts it very much. And even Rom, who I think, did they play together? I think it was Rom was talking about like Morikawa didn't have the best ball striking day that, that he's seen from him. Right. So that to me was a little bit of a commentary on Morikawa not being kind of at the top of his game, which I think has me a little concerned. Phil Mickelson has been one of the biggest storylines in golf and everything else over the course of the past couple of months. Kyle and I have already spent so much oxygen talking about the reception that Phil got today, and he's getting this week, Greg. Eight over par, 78. Not a very good round, but correct me if I'm wrong, seems to be like a pretty positive sentiment towards him this week. Yeah, there is. There really is. I mean, I, I am curious to see if we get a couple of hecklers here and there. But I think the golf fan in general is a respectful fan, and uh, and they they love Phil Mickelson still. The media has been very harsh on him, but that doesn't mean that your everyday fans, your major championship fans, understand the gravity or even know they may not even know about it. Yeah, that, uh, that's that's the thing. Like I don't, uh, your average U.S. Open fan that came here today, do they? They just want to see Phil Mickelson, right? Like, they just want to yeah. see... They've heard I, rumors of Liv. Yeah, but they don't... They haven't dug into it. They probably haven't read me or listened to y'all or, or whatever, which is fine. Like, that's that's what probably what sports should be. You, you probably shouldn't be, like, everybody who's watching this and deep into it every day or whatever. That, not that you shouldn't be, but that's not what the majority of people are. Yeah, there's definitely a, a feel at an event that this is an event. Right, this isn't a, a playoff hockey game where you feel like everybody there is rooting for one team. It, it's not that. It's an. It, this is an event. It's a golf event, and and the fans are respectful. But I think at this, at, you know, to go just on his play, like he, he's not. Phil's not playing bad because he's a live golfer. He's playing bad because he hasn't played and he's not been good at U.S. Opens over the last nine years. I mean, you go back to I think it was twenty. 13 was his last top 20 even at a U.S. Open. He just he doesn't play U.S. Opens very well. He's 51, 52. He turned 52 today. He's 52. And it's just, it, it, yeah, it just gets a lot more difficult. I did not, I don't think anybody expected him to play well this week, and I think that's, I mean, he's going to miss the cut by a lot. Seemingly he is. So we're going to talk about guys who could win this golf tournament. I've got the live odds from our friends over at Caesar Sportsbook, but first we're going to take a quick break and hear a word from our partners. And we're back. To no one's surprise, Rory McIlroy is the favorite to win the U.S. That's offensive. Open. That's offensive. Adam Hadwin. Craig is literally the only human outside of Canada that is offended by this. Adam Hadwin is 10th on the odds board, Greg, which is even more 
offensive. So Rory McIlroy, four and a half to one. Justin Thomas, John Rahm, Matt Fitzpatrick, all 11 to one. Adam Hadwin, 25 to 1. I can give you some specific names if you're interested. What did, but what did Fitzy end at? Was he 3 or 2 under? Uh, 2. I believe 2. two. Under. Yeah. Did he, two bogey, under he bogeyed 18? Because I think he was at 3. He bogeyed 18. Yep. Uh, what's JT at? What, Justin what's Thomas it? is 10 to 1. He's 10, at 1 under. So he's 3 back. Correct. Maybe 2 back of the... The real lead. The real lead. <laughs> um, what's Morikawa? Morikawa is 18 to 1. Three back. That's kind of interesting. That's really it. So he he made a bomb putt on two, yeah. which is gonna pad the putting stats. Two was, but two was hard. Two was very, very hard. I, I mean there's there's a thing where when he gets in the heat of the battle, like I trust him and he's in the heat of the battle. I, I that was the one that stuck out to me, Colin Morikawa at 18 to 1. What what is DJ at? I, I think that would be interesting because he's only one back of Rory and two back of the lead. Twenty to one. Oof. I would. I think that's high. I think he should be shorter that's than that. High. That's really high. It's. I Sitting mean, he, right. He hasn't been playing great golf, but he's somebody that has played good enough at majors, and he has the sto- sort of uh, makeup that if he gets into it, you're like, well, I, I don't. It's it's a, it's kind of like Brooks. Like he's I don't really care. Like I don't care what the last two months have looked like. It's DJ in the mix at a major. Like it, it, it almost is irrelevant. Right. You and and he has the ability. Like okay, I was standing too far away from the ball. I move closer and I go shoot thirty under at the Northern Trust. Yeah. Like he, he will get it in the literally the snap of a finger. That's why he's so hard to predict. What's Hovland at? Thirty-five. I think I saw. I like that. He's only four back. Although I don't, I don't really like him on this course just because the short game is. You know, his Shaky. short game, I found an interesting stat about his short game. He's like 204th strokes gain approach Give it to us. around the green. Yeah. But uh, scrambling from the rough, yes. he's 10th on tour. What uh, is scrambling from the rough like? When you're wh- getting up and down, up and down percentage from the rough. So not bunkers. Not bunkers. So if you take bunk, so is, is bunker play his problem? No, bunker play is terrible. Bunker play is bad. Okay. Yeah, and, and like fairway areas. Or re- tight lies. Yeah, and scrambling, really remember, bad. is just getting up and down. It's not necessarily a, a strokes gains metric. It's him getting up and down right. for par. The problem is there's the a lot of tight lies around these greens, but there's also a lot of in rough. Front. In front. It's yeah. mostly rough if you're long or yeah. on the sides. So Southern Hills would be a place where there's more like tight tie exactly. lies around like the national. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting. 35 like to that. 1, four back. Look, I don't know what that really means. Is he going to hit it in the rough more often? Is he going to get up and down here? He's aiming, aiming for the right. But it's he, <laughs> he was with Justin Thomas and Tony Finau and was dr- driving it past them down the heart of the fairway that's, routinely. That's, cr- that's I mean, crazy. I mean, trust him with the driver. What's yeah. uh, what's Xander at? I think it was 25 to 1. Okay. And he's at and even. He's even? Yeah. I, I don't like him to win. I, I don't like him enough gonna to win. He's going to do the thing where he, like, shoots he's gonna finish T7. 71 tomorrow and then 68, 69, finish T9. What do and you, you're like, yeah. oh, this is. What are you most looking forward to tomorrow? What am I most looking forward to tomorrow? Um, I'm most looking forward to whatever Jordan Spieth does. Right, we we Wait, he ended at two over or two one over, over, which gained strokes to the field. Yeah, he was obviously not feeling well. He gets the long delay. If he makes a move, I think he's still very much in it. But th- like, I have no idea what to expect from. Him. I want to watch. I'm going to be watching Jordan Spieth hardcore tomorrow. I think I, I think I'm most excited tomorrow about what does DJ do? Yeah. I mean, I think that's he didn't talk to the media today. I don't know if that was. We heard that he was going to. Oh, he never ends up he, doing he, it. He, he, the people I talked to over there, maybe he did after we came over here, but the people I talked to over there said he got he ducked out. I don't know if that was purposeful. I don't know what that was about. But if DJ's at five under tomorrow, you got to talk to the media. It becomes a thing. I, I think that would, as again, as much as people don't want to hear about this, like the live thing is a huge story. DJ's the face of it. I think it would be fascinating if he got into – the mix at an event that a week ago we were like, is he going to be banned from this event? Right. Right. right? Very interesting. But I, I will say, I'm glad that nobody took what's very clearly the biggest story in this event, which, which is, is what does, uh, what does Adam Hadwin do obviously. tomorrow? It's good. For, it's a good bit. We've got no, running here. I'm, I'm just I, trying I, to fuel I, the fire. I got, I got just hijacked by that. Yeah. I, I didn't see that coming. Um, 
I, I think Rory McIlroy is still the biggest story tomorrow on a serious note. He's done this before. He's played well before. He's been in position and let us down at one point, if you're a fan. Uh, but he's had a letdown round. And I'm wondering, is are, are we going to see him put four really high-quality rounds together if, this if, week? If Rory shoots blank tomorrow, then I'm convinced that he's going to win this tournament. What, what is, what's that number for you? Um, 69. So it's I, not, was, I was going to say 68. So it's not that low. No. I don't think So I don't if Rory think shoots to 69 be. tomorrow, you're, you're, you are in on him winning the U.S. Open. Yeah, unless Adam Hadwin shoots 63. <laughs> if Adam Hadwin shoots a 63 tomorrow, I'll get the Canadian flag tattooed on me somewhere. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty safe, right? That's Seven, very safe. Yeah, that's very, very safe. safe. Okay. Uh, I think if Rory shoots, I think it would take 66 for me. Really? Yeah. So that'd put him at seven under, and you, yeah. you'd feel. All right. If he sh- if he shoots sixty six tomorrow, I'll write the this is happening column. Okay. The the, the, the prince of Pontevedra is is greater than the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. <laughs> we accept wow. we accept this offer. <laughs> is that a should we should we like <laughs> cut it off there? <laughs> All right, gents. Uh, round one in the books. We're gonna be back after each and every round this week. Coming to you together. I can't believe it. It's happening. Greg doing all the hard work behind the camera. Jacob doing all the hard work on the mixer. Greg Ducharme can be found on Twitter at the Real GFD. That's Kyle Porter. You can find him at Kyle Porter CBS, and you can find me at Rick Run Good. This has been the first cut. We'll catch you next time.